you know, I'm seeing Flight tomorrow night, and um, I was saw a recent interview with Robert Zemeckis. I think it was in the New York Times. And, of course, he's been making the rounds doing interviews, and I guess he's been perplexed that when people interview him, a consistent theme that comes up is, you know, basically you've been gone for like 10 to 12 years. Yep. <laughs> Just because he's been devoted devoted all of his resources and talent to the motion capture stuff. And this is his first live action feature in mm-hmm. yeah, I think 12 years something like that. Yeah, yeah. And and he's really taken uh, that uh, personally. Uh, you know, he he hasn't taken well to that criticism. But in a way, yeah, he has. He you know, he had these movies that he made these motion capture films are I think awful. Well, they feel like they're made by robots. They don't feel like they're made made by some real life person. You I'd know? Rather, I mean, Christmas Carol has this great cast. I would much rather. I've said it before. I would have much rather seen a live action version of that story. With, well, there was no reason to do the the emotion capture thing at all. I thought it was ridiculous. Yeah. Same with Beowulf, for that matter. I thought that would have been a much better um, live action film. Well, yeah. yeah I mean, so he what did he expect? <laughs> you know, he had the he had the three movies, right? The Polar Express, Beowulf, and yeah. Christmas Carol. <clears throat> right. I mean, I, and they they did make money. Uh, I mean, none of them were out and out flops, uh, but uh, it, it they all did seem like an experiment. They and they didn't seem worthy in terms of storytelling necessarily. They just right. seemed like their value lie in, you know. Can we pull this off? And they and, ate up and, ten years of his career. Yes. Yes. And but you know, Cameron says you know his work was essential. Would that piss you off <laughs> that you yeah. worked like you worked ten to a dozen years to 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 bring a technology to a certain place, and then Cameron picks up your football and runs it for a touchdown, like he's the yeah. one that scores the touchdown. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, yeah, if I was the Beckus, I'd be pissed off. But, uh, <laughs> but you know, Cameron ran the touchdown because he had what it took to do so. Right. You know? I, it seems strange to me that he doesn't understand this, though. He doesn't understand the, the. I mean, it is, it is, you know, lame of of people to come in and say, well, you've been completely inactive in movies. He hasn't been, of course. So, right. so that's their problem. But uh, and so I understand that, but. Uh, but he does have to understand, you know, it's like, oh, it's strange, because you haven't really made a movie with any living human being <laughs> in it uh, for ten years now. So, And there's something about, I mean, uh, I don't like the fact that, it, because he talked about some of the visual effects in this one. Apparently there's a there's a very impressive plane crash. But then he says there are tons of visual effects that you have no idea you're seeing. Like, I'll use... A good, a good, you know, take three from an actor, and put it in the scene opposite the take two from the other actor. Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. I remember Lucas talking about that sort of thing when he was redoing the Star Wars movies, and I thought, oh, that's terrible. I don't, I don't like that. I mean, that's that that takes the purity out of human interaction. Right. So he's he's still doing the same thing. <laughs> right. Yeah. He's taken yeah. the real the real time interaction out of the equation. I mean, uh, I kind of applaud him for like trying to find a different way to use special effects. And I think there are many different ways that you can use modern digital special effects to right. improve your film. Uh, however, uh, that is strange. I mean, come on. That's and look, I, I, and I understand. I understand when you cut from. From from one person to another, you can you you use different takes. But I'm talking about in the in the same shot. It's a two shot, and he and he and he mats take two from one actor against take another take from a different actor. Yeah, right. that's, that's, but in that's, the same shot. That's kind yeah. of eerie. Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I don't. What what do we think of Zemeckis anyway? I mean, is he is he kind of the the Spielberg clone that did the best in his career out of all of those oh. guys. Oh yeah, I yeah. Mean, I mean, I used car, sure. Back to the Future, Romancing the Stone, um, 
Castaway. I want to hold your hand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I like Castaway. I mean, a lot of people, I, I thought that was a good movie. I love Castaway that was a brave too. movie. Castaway yeah. was a ballsy movie. Um, it was. Uh, and I remember he did he did the first half of that, and then he went and he shot What Lies Beneath, and then came back for Tom Hanks. Hey, What Lies way. Beneath is okay too, you know. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I, I would say that maybe my least favorite mo- uh, of his movies nowadays. I mean, not when it came out because I loved it, but when it came out. But uh, nowadays, you know, Forrest Gump is still like something that I just can't can't go back and take a look at because I just disagree with so much of it but uh i think when he won i remember when he won the for forrest gump it seemed like it was a given that he was going to win because i figured spielberg won the, i guess the previous year so i remember when he read the thing oh you're, you're whatever his son's name your dad just won the oscar remember that yeah. oh yeah 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 remember so i mean it's like, and I guess, what was his was was Contact his follow up to Forrest Gump? Yeah, I, was, I, mean, I it, had mixed feelings about Contact, but um, that's just me. Um, well, it didn't end well, but uh, but I, I liked I liked a lot of it, you know, up until it's sort of syrupy, uh, too syrupy sort of ending. I always thought the South Park commentary on that film was spot on. Do you feel? I mean, what do you when you look at the Spielberg clones? Who would you say are the Spielberg clones? Uh, uh, Joe Johnston. Joe Johnston, Chris Columbus. Um, yep. And, and uh, the Mechas definitely are the ones that are the first ones that come to mind. Um, do do you who who else would you? There's another one I would kind of throw in there. Lawrence in there? Kasdan, maybe. Yes. Yeah. I would throw Lawrence Kasdan in that in that. Route to in, in some ways, even though he wasn't like actually, I don't think that he actually did anything that was connected to Spielberg as a producer. But uh, but yes, I, I would throw Lawrence Kasdan as, as as somebody who you know who was in that wheelhouse. Mm-hmm. Would Dante would Dante be in the wheelhouse? Mm. I don't know if Dante. I mean, Dante, Dante would be in the wheelhouse he more than bit, Kasdan. He, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Dante, yeah. Dante was was you know supported by Spielberg for part yeah. of his career. Like Spielberg. But, Spielberg's but, never produced a Kasdan film. No. Yeah. No. But, I just threw but, that in there more. I just because I was more thinking of Luke. Luke gets you know this you know and that sort of thing. But um. Well. Well, but but Dante has a sort of singular voice. That's different from the rest of them. He actually came into, he actually came under Spielberg's wing, already having established his own voice. I think you know through his seventies and uh, through his seventies work. So, so I guess I what like I what I want to know is <laughs> if Zemeckis is the most successful of those Spielberg children, does he? In his work, has he elevated outside of the personality of Spielberg? I mean, is he distinctive beyond a Spielbergian like director? I think he's. I think he's transcended it just a tiny bit. I mean, you know, I uh, not not completely, like not through leaps and bounds, but I think that he's. I think he's transcended it just a tiny bit. I mean, when you look at something like Castaway, which is a pretty brave movie. Uh, for most of its most of its uh, running time, because it 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 it, it doesn't shy away. The the, the the craziest thing about Castaway is that it almost has no music score, so there's nothing yeah. to key you into like how to feel at certain points or whatever. It, it relies on it relies on a a, um, a, a an immaculately crafted sort of soundscape. Uh, but uh, but then when it comes to its ending, you know, it goes back to uh, its last, you know, 20 minutes or so. It goes back to sort of a uh, sort of a Spielbergian type of thing, you mm-hmm. know, this, this note of hope or whatever. And you know, I I, I still like the movie. You know, I, I like all of it. You know, um, his best uh, movies are Spielbergian, though. Really, though, his best work really is. Back to the Future, I think, or something along those lines. That's really like his. 
And I mean, I mean, even you. I mean, I still, I still go back to used cars and oh, I hold her hand as his best yeah. movies because uh, his two best films. Because I really feel like they have their feet on the ground, but they still have that touch of like, of, uh, of when Spielberg wasn't such a brand name, uh, even though he was a producer on both of the films, he wasn't such a brand name that he couldn't. He couldn't be a little bit more daring and even even sort of vulgar. Uh, mm-hmm. um, and mm-hmm. those 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 two movies those two movies are still incredibly fun for me. I well, I I, I, I mean, I, I felt the same thing about Dante with with some with especially some like Gremlins too. I mean, uh, I mean Dante had a very biting uh, sense about him that was was a little little bit stronger than what Spielberg would have done, you know, stronger in terms of tone. Mm-hmm. Harsher. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. 